Okay, good morning. Um, this talk will focus on treatment outcomes for cryptococcal meningitis. My name is Sheila Malloy and I'm based at the Centre for Global Health at St George's University of London. So the intended learning outcomes for today are to be aware of the 10 week and one year survival for patients with cryptococcal meningitis on antifungal therapy. To be aware of the predictors of poor prognosis for patients with cryptococcal meningitis. And also to appreciate the role of maintenance fluconazole therapy in preventing relapse disease. The estimated um, annual mortality from cryptococcal meningitis is 181,100 deaths annually globally. And the majority of these deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa with 75% of mortality associated in this region. In terms of treatment outcomes, um, our best estimate of 10 week outcome in clinical trial settings, so in research based settings, <clears throat> is 35 to 40% at um, using two weeks of amphotericin B based therapy. So this is in ideal settings in low and middle income countries. However, when we look at the usual reality where patients are treated with fluconazole monotherapy, 10 week mortality is often in excess of 50%. And it was shown in Malawi that survival at one year was just 22% on fluconazole monotherapy. In a cohort in Zambia, it was shown that even with two weeks of amphotericin B given in routine care, in hospital mortality was as high as 39%. If we look at pre predictors of 10 week mortality, the two most important predictors are altered mental status, which is a Glasgow coma score of less than 15, and also high fungal burden identified in the CSF. Other predictors of poor prognosis include older age, low body weight, anemia, and also high peripheral white cell count. Prior to the introduction of consolidation and maintenance strategies, relapse occurred at rates of 30 to 40%. However, with the introduction of consolidation and maintenance therapy, or maintenance schedules, this has reduced significantly. So our consolidation schedule is 800 milligrams of fluconazole from the end of the induction therapy until patients are started on ART, at which stage the fluconazole is reduced to 400 to 800 milligrams. Patients then go on to a maintenance schedule of 200 milligrams of fluconazole from 10 weeks. In order to diagnose relapse, a patient must have new clinical signs and symptoms consistent with cryptococcosis after an initial clinical improvement. In addition, positive cultures after initial CSF sterilization must be seen. It must be noted that surrogate markers like India Inc, Crag titers and biochemical markers are actually insufficient to diagnose relapse. In terms of persistence, persistent cryptococcal disease is defined as persistently positive CSF cultures after one month of antifungal therapy. And as with relapse, surrogate markers like India Inc, Crag titers and biochemical markers are insufficient to diagnose persistent disease. In terms of management of relapsed and persistent disease, both persistent and relapsed infections must be distinguished from cryptococcal iris and raised intracranial pressure, as management of the two will differ. Relapse and persistence, it should be noted, is exceptionally rare where fluconazole, except where fluconazole monotherapy is used for induction treatment. For managing persistent and relapsed infections, um, Induction therapy should be reinitiated using amphotericin B where this is available, and this should be continued until CSF sterilization. In addition, antifungal susceptibility testing should be conducted where this is possible, and che checks for changes in MICs from the original isolate should be conducted. So in summary, most cryptococcal meningitis deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa, where the 10-week mortality in routine care is often greater than 50%. Fungal burden in the CSF and altered mental status are very important prognostic markers. And long-term maintenance antifungal therapy reduces the rate of relapse from greater than 50% to less than 5%. Culture is required in order to diagnose relapse or persistent disease. 
and reinitiation of induction therapy at higher doses or for longer duration is recommended. And where possible, antifungal susceptibility testing should be performed on all relapse isolates. So that concludes our talk on treatment outcomes. Thank you.